Thanks for being here, Billy Ray. We can't wait to chat with you. crowd you you got in here. (laughs) We only get the best crowds here at Build, right? Uh, Congratulations on your new album, which came out today, right? Yeah, I think so. Set the record straight. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what number is this for you? 15? It's somewhere up there. (laughs) Somewhere. A lot of, you know, made music all my life. Mm -hmm. And... um, this album has kind of set the record straight as going back to my roots, you know, and it's very honest. It's, it's, the, the, the songs are my truth. And um, going back to my earliest influences of bluegrass and um, my grandfather was a Pentecostal preacher. And so there was a lot of the, the holy music felt even holier. You know, it was like a little bit of the Holy Ghost get into music. That's why I do, you know, get to dancing. People get up and hit tambourines. And the music felt, made you feel. And um, that's kind of what I still do to this day. And a lot of those roots, you know, are in this album, along with some very, you know, progressive, you know, um, all styles of music. I, lo- I love jazz. Just uh, yesterday I got to play with... Uh, Harry Connick Jr.'s band, and you know they're just really class A great musicians. And um, it, it, we played a song off the album called "Hey Daddy," and it was just so great to be with that. Cal- it was like a A team caliber jazz band, and they had the horns, and you know all this. It was just really special. It reminded me of um, being on Broadway with that big orchestra, and I love playing with the orchestra. But I also love playing with a banjo, a mandolin, and a flat top. And um, this album kind of runs the gamut of all my musical styles and genres and influences. And hence the title, Set the Record Straight. This is who I am. Nothing fancy. Um, I didn't set out to, you know, I'll never paint the Mona Lisa, but I don't have any desire to. That's, that's not my thing. You know, I'm, I'm just kind of a simple guy from Flatwoods, Kentucky that had a dream and loved music and and sing about my truth. So you're just a lover of all kind of music, which you can kind of hear throughout this album. When did you when did the inspiration hit you to start writing and creating Set the Record Straight? Um uh, really years ago, to be honest, some of some of the songs uh, one in particular, uh, you'll hear a song I do with Miley. Uh, she's 13 years old at the time of this recording. Uh, it's a song called Stand. And it's a really important song. That's why I, I put it on this album. I just felt like it had so much to say. And I, I also think that, you know, Miley is um, from a very, very young girl. She had influences around her, such as Carl Perkins and Dolly Parton, and Waylon Jennings, George Jones. Um, the list goes on and on. Uh, Ed King, who wrote Sweet Home Alabama and so many of Leonard Skinner's big hits and a lot of great songwriters and Miley kind of absorbed a lot of that. Noah too, they absorbed the influences and musical influences that would be coming in and out of our house to play music. And um, Stand is a song she sang with me again. I think she might have been 13. Um, And it's about stand for what you believe in, stand for all that is right. You know, be the change you want to see. That's what stand is about. And as you know, in our world now, you know, this is this song is just feels like it's really got something to say at this time. God's timing is always perfect. And I felt like this song was kind of saved for this moment and this time because it can speak to people. And I think, you know, You look at Miley for she learned something. She does stand for what she believes in. And I'm really proud of her for that. Uh, Noah Lindsay, too. You know, I don't know if you know. um, Did any of you see Noah out with Katy Perry? Madison Square Garden? Okay, just lie to me. Go ahead. Come on. You don't have to tell the truth. Just pretend you were there. It doesn't matter. Concert tickets are expensive these days, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, so um, Noah uh, gave me a great gift. I had never played Madison Square Garden. And she's opening up for Katy Perry and invited me to come out, be on stage. Yeah, it was a real magic moment. It ended up being so much fun. We did it a few more times after that. And um, but it was great. Noah, she's got a lot of heart and soul. You hear it in her music. She's her own original herself. You know, she, she writes her songs and has her own style. I think that's, we all share the love of music, but we all have our own 
styles and our own personality that we bring into our own truth, you know, and that's what we do. It must be a beautiful household to grow up in and live in is to be with you guys and music was probably constantly going on in the house, right? Along with a lot of chaos, yeah. <laughs> but it, chaos is better if a little music's in the background, you know what I mean? So um, there was always a lot of music, sure was, yeah. And you have a song, too, on this with Noah, right? Do you do Tulsa Time with Noah? I do, and That's it's awesome. so fun. I don't know if y'all know the Don Williams classic, Tulsa Time. Y'all know Tulsa Time? And uh, Noah, um, she kind of put her own twist on it. Um, she sounds a whole lot like Mae West when she yodels. I had no idea that Noah was even a yodeler. <laughs> And somehow God gave her the gift to yodel. And she does a little yodel in there that I've never heard her do before. Yeah. And it's really magic. Um, it sounds odd to say that because I, the tune itself, the dance track, is just, it's just smoking. Like it's, it's made for dance clubs and it feels really fun. And she brings that youth and energy to it. And then, I mean... I'm just an old man. Like, I'm, I'm kind of like an old rock that you might see sitting somewhere, and you go, that thing's probably been here a long time and could tell some stories about what happened here. And I happen to be, I've lived a lot, and I've seen a lot, and I kind of, sometimes I feel like that old rock, you know, and I'm, but that's okay with me. I'm cool with that. I, I like to rock, so, you know, <laughs> bring it on. I'm sure your family loves that you're the rock and, and you inspire them to create their own music. Well, now, there's a difference in the rock and a rock. <laughs> I'm a rock. You're not Dwayne yeah. Johnson, no, are you? you know, no, 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 no. You're not. <laughs> He's the rock. Man, that dude, let's just talk about Dwayne Johnson for a while. That, <laughs> that guy is the nicest man. Uh, have any of y'all met him? Uh, dude, I wish. Dude, uh, you know what? It's interesting. Man, he is a, I mean, he's obviously a major superstar. But when he's around, he's just the nicest guy helping people. He helps the crew move cameras around and stuff. It's like Jackie Chan. I went to do a Jackie Chan movie. I was intimidated to meet Jackie Chan. I, I didn't know if he might get loose <laughs> on me and, you know, throw me across the room or something just to warm up. And uh, luckily, I was his partner in the movie. I was his, and uh, so uh, he didn't hurt me. But Jackie Chan was the nicest man. Like, I mean, you just wouldn't believe. And he actually, when they break, he starts breaking down equipment, and he's moving it and and just helping every single body. I, I just thought, kind of like Dolly Parton. Yeah. Those three, those three superstars happen to be three of the nicest people I know. And you have to wonder, you know, as you sow, so shall you reap. Is that law, that, that karma that they put out in goodness, it comes back. And that's just the law of life. It's... You know, what you sow is what you reap. And, the, yeah. you know, it's true, isn't it? Can I get an amen? <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay, great. Well, nice people flock to nice people. And you're very kind yourself, Billy Ray, I have to say. You have that good energy about you. Well, thank you for saying that. Thank you. Um, so what about this album is special to you? What, what, what kind of songs stand out to you on this album? And a lot well, of cool collaborations as well. You know what I like about this album? First of all, my face ain't on the cover. <laughs> To me, right off the bat, I look at this cover, I go, well, it's so much better to see an album. And, but that actually represents me. Again, setting the record straight, you, you would think that was Flatwoods, Kentucky. Um, only that's a little bit flatter than Flatwoods. Flatwoods, I don't know why they called it Flatwoods, because they should have called it Steep Ass Hill. <laughs> like, I mean, it, it's like, it's just a lot. The topography is Appalachia, and it just rolls up and down steep cliffs. But um, Flatwoods looks a whole lot kind of like that. And um, certainly that old guitar and all those old albums, 45s, and, you know, having a record player. Do you all listen to vinyl yes. these days? Don't you love vinyl? It's coming uh, back. Yeah, this album's going to be out. We're going to do uh, some a limited edition of vinyl copies of the album with the album jacket, the whole thing. So I'm kind of excited about that, too. You've yeah. been doing a lot of exciting things because we just recently saw you on The Voice with Miley and you were a mentor. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? What, what did that experience feel like to help other future artists kind of find their own, their own path? Well, it was uh, um, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I love the show. The show to me represents the dream and the challenge and the pursuit of your happiness and being all that you want to be in life. Mm -hmm. Seeing people's dreams come true is the coolest thing in the world. Um, and that's what this show's about. And then 
they have a tremendous amount of talent. Uh, the coaches, they all have their personalities that are just so beautiful. It's a team together, and I just think that that combination of the personalities, the talent, the producers, it all starts at the top. It's just a great show, a great bunch of people, and I loved being on there. And I love Miley's team. I think she's got a real shot. And, uh, okay, is Team Miley going to win this year? I think year? they got a real shot at it. There's some, there's some seriously great competition on the show. I mean, everyone on there, it sounds cliche to say this, but everyone that's on that show is a winner. Like, they're all super talented. And now it's, you know, it's getting down to crunch time, and it's really exciting to watch. I'm, I'm actually way more involved inside my spirit because I'm rooting for these kids. And it's not just the kids I met on Miley's team. Um, you know, uh, Blake stole one of Miley's girls, you know. She's so great. Yeah, she's great. And... You know, I, early on, I told Miley when I said, you know, she's special. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's going to come down. It's going to come down to a, a really close one. Yeah. And, you know, I'm I'm rooting for everyone. I really am. I, I, I just know it's going to be great. And um, certainly Miley's team and the uh, – it's, it's really got a lot to offer. There's a some very soulful uh, spirit of you, you'll hear um, – you know, anywhere between like a, I think the world's hungry for a, a new Janis Joplin. Yes. You know what I mean? I and mean, a lot of young kids go, it's Janis Joplin. We hear that legend. We hear about the voice. We hear the voice. Where's the new one? That's hard to, that's hard to come up Miley with. Miley has someone on her team there's, that I'm blanking on her name, but she's only like 16 years old and she's like a hardcore rocker. There's some seriously yeah. good talent out there. Um, I'm anxious to see it come down. And um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be exciting. Do you see kind of how Miley works behind the scenes, too, and how she really, it seems like she gives these artists, like, a lot of her time and really, like, even after the show, has really worked with past artists she's worked with? Miley is 100% Miley, mm -hmm. like, all the time. Like, I've never seen her not be Miley. Like, no matter what you see is what you get. Like, and that character that she brings to that show, it's just the same little girl or young lady that I saw grow up. Um, she's got her own style, her own beliefs, her own opinion, and that's what every individual should have. That's what makes an individual. Well, she must be very proud of you because <laughs> not only not is all. this a new album, but 25-year anniversary, you're re-releasing Some Gave All yeah. um, right in time for Veterans Day. Can mm. you talk about this song and what it's meant to you? And... and uh, why re-record it now? Yeah, uh, Some Gave All is um, a special song. Some Gave All is not on this album. I, I didn't want to... It's not for sale. It's for free. And uh, Some Gave All is a song I wrote in 1989 about a Vietnam veteran I met up in Huntington, West Virginia, and driving home that night, I wrote a song about him. A few years later, it would become the song that changed my life and the title track off of my first album. The album with Achy Breaky Heart was called Some Gave All, and Some Gave All was song number 10. Now, coincidentally, the guy that wrote Achy Breaky Heart, his name is Don Von Tress. He's a two-tour Vietnam veteran. And I actually threw one of my songs off of the collection of 10 songs I'd written. I threw one off and added this song by Don Von Tress. The song was called Don't Tell My Heart. And I started playing it in Huntington, West Virginia the night I heard his demo. It was Don Von Tress singing at a little cassette tape and I just fell in love with it. I started playing it right that night and um, a lot of the people that was partying in the club, a few of them highly intoxicated, would come up and they'd say, play it, ain't you break your song. <laughs> Play it, Aggie Breaky song. And I'd say, I just played it. And they'd say, well, play it again. And, and honestly, within the first night, I thought, this song feels like a hit. And um, the only thing that felt a little bit off about it was that it was called Don't Tell My Heart. And when I met Don Von Tress, after I recorded the song, I met Don Von Tress for the first time. And I said, you know, sir, I said, the only thing, he said, anything you want to do with this song, you do it. I said, the only thing that strikes me is, did you ever think about, Maybe the title might be Achy Breaky Heart. 
And he said, man, you call it whatever you want. Just put it out. And uh, so we changed the name to Achy Breaky Heart. And uh, there's three versions. I know. <laughs> uh, now, back, back to that. So Don Von Treas, I'll go back and finish some gave all. So Don Von Treas and I, after 25 years, we decided to recut Achy Breaky Heart. And you'll hear on this new album, there's three versions on the album in three different languages. And it's really, uh, I don't know if you've heard Giancarlo Scanella. Have you heard Giancarlo? I mean, he's an amazing artist. He, he sings a version with us. It's very, to me, it's, I was a big Bob Marley fan. Yeah. And he took it to Bob Marleyville and, and, and just, you know, it, it's a collaboration. That, that song was always a, made to be a bridge. It's not a wall. That song is a bridge. And it bridged people together from different places, from different languages. 25 years ago, it was a common denominator that the whole world related to and could sing. And um, so when Don Von Tress and I recut it, Jim Carlos then took it and he made a reggae version. Then uh, Ronnie Millsap came in and we have a Ronnie Millsap version on there. And then we have one that's just a flat up uh, dance, go get it, uh, real fun dance mix of it. So there's three versions. Long story short, the fact that we was going to recut record uh, Achy Breaky Heart, we wanted it to be different, and I wanted to feel where Don comes from. I always thought the song could have been bigger if it would have sounded just like Don's demo, and Don always laughs when I say that. And, um, I think but, it's pretty uh, big, yeah, Billy I mean, I know, but I, it could have been so much, and this version is much more like Don's demo. We, we went to Muscle Shows, and we got the Swampers, and we got all these great pickers that have played on so many, many great records from all that stuff that comes out of shows, you know, some great musicians, and we cut Achy. And then just over the last couple months during the summer, um, Don got some musicians together, and he started building this track of Some Gave All. And to be honest, uh, he, he was building it as a gift for me. He knows how much the song means to me, and he started building me this track, and I fell in love with it. I said, man, let's... Let's, get, let's, let's finish it, and let's give it to the veterans. Let's give it to the men and women in uniform for their service and their sacrifice. Let's don't sell this song. Let's just give it to the veterans on Veterans Day and say thank you for your service. And, and you people can send it to any veterans that you know or veterans family. You can send it yourself as a gift and just say thank you for your service. Here's some gave all. Here's a free song. And so that's kind of how Don Von Tress and I, here we go full circle, with this Vietnam veteran making this track and now being in this moment. We didn't plan this, by the way. We never planned for this to happen now. It just was a natural evolution of the way things came. And when we finished it up, and I just said, you know, I, I, you can feel everything in our world seems to be getting just a little bit crazy. Have you noticed? Not at all. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, yeah. You might not even notice, but um, <laughs> I noticed. Yeah. But I think no matter what's going on in the world, I think it's really important that all of us remember to say thank you to our veterans because it's their service and sacrifice that gave us the freedom to live in this great country that we live in. And it ain't perfect, by far. It ain't perfect, but there's always room for love and hope. And that's what music can bring. Yep. That deserves a round of applause. But it starts with our, our veterans. veterans. All our veterans. So stay, say thanks to a veteran today. Absolutely. And you guys can uh, download this on Build. Uh, there's a free download link, and you can send it to any veteran you know or anyone, uh, men and women in the, uh, you know, fighting for our country right now. You're doing that? Yes. You're doing that on AOL? Yes, they right can... next to this video, guys, there's a link that you could click, and you can get the download. And it's also on your site, your website yeah, as well. But they can just send it right off of AOL to, say, Uncle Joe in Iowa. Thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. Some gave all? Yes. That's so cool. How about AOL, big hand, for doing that? <laughs> That's cool. Very that is cool. so cool. Well, uh, I do want to open it up to some audience questions. Oh, let's do it. Yes. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good, ma'am. How are you? What's your name? Michelle. Nice to meet you. Um, Where are you from, Michelle? I'm from New Jersey. New Jersey, just across the river. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's not that bad. It's okay. I like to go over there. It's great. I like to go over there and uh, stand on that cliff. What cliff? The one that overlooks the island. 
you know, what? as soon as you cross the bridge, and you go up. Yeah, I'm like not a nature. And girl. you know, there's a place to pull off. <laughs> yeah, you know the place not to pull off up there girl. and look at the yes? city. You know that place? Oh, like across. Oh, okay. Right it's across like the a, water. It's not like a like a mountain. It's just like. It's land. a hill. It's a hill. <laughs> um, I was wondering, um, what is your favorite city to play in? Mm. Oh boy, that's a that's a hard one, because you're gonna make one city happy and tick the rest of them off. You know what I mean? Yeah. But what let me city see. are you in right now? I'm gonna now, be honest. Really? I'm gonna be honest. I like, in my goal, I would pray every night and say, God, give me the wisdom and vision to make music that can touch people's lives around the world. That was my goal. I'm not labeled this. I'm not labeled that. That's, again, back to the title of the album, Set the Record Straight. You can call me a country artist, but I'm not necessarily country. I'm not necessarily rock. I'm not necessarily this or that. I'm all of these things. I, I love all styles of music. And my goal was to touch people's lives with the music. You know, and um, so I like playing the world. I like the whole world. I, re I love like we're kicking off the tour next year in Australia. That's so exciting for me. I, I've done several world tours, but every time I ever did it, I was always moving so fast. Like I've been to Paris uh, three or five times and uh, never saw the Eiffel Tower except out of the airplane window, you know, landing or going down. I want to go there and stand there, mm -hmm. you know, and then. I've been to Australia so many times, never once saw a kangaroo. That's hard to do. How do you? So I'm going back to Australia. Do you have an Aussie in your group that no, can go get I'm, you a kangaroo uh, or a koala? I know some Aussies now, yeah. so this is going to work out good. Um, but I'm going down to Australia, and I'm going to see a kangaroo. Yeah. But I love the world. I love playing the world. I do. Way to put it. Yeah. Who's next? Hey. Hi. Um, I was wondering, out of making music, what is your favorite part? Is it actually writing it? Is it being in the recording studio? Is it going on tour and performing? What's your name? Amanda. Amanda? Where are you from? Chicago originally. Chicago, mm. Um, you know, for me, creatively, I, I wish I could say writing the songs, but my songs come at moments of inspiration colliding with desperation. Like, I can't, like, schedule a songwriting appointment and write at that time. Like, my songs come when I get home and find out that all my furniture is sitting out in the yard, and I've been thrown out of my house, and I go, where am I going to live? Where am I going to live? Where am I going to live when I get home? Yeah, where am I going to live when I get home? My old lady throw down everything. I'll, that's the way my songs come. And so most, all of my songs I've written in a moment of some pretty heavy stuff. Now, there's some things like country music has the blues. I, I pulled up to a, a place in Branson, Missouri, and saw Loretta Lynn's tour bus playing across the, the street and wrote Country Music Has the Blues just out of the inspiration of seeing Loretta Lynn's bus. I wrote it right then, so I just did the natural thing and said, you know what, I'll go over and see if she's in there, I'll play it for her. I said, go over, she opens up the door, I go in, we have a cup of coffee, and I said, hey, I just wrote this song about seeing your bus, and I wrote this song. She goes, oh, I played it. She said, I wanna sing on that. Well, the next thing I know, I'll, I went and cut the track, and then uh, George Jones heard it. George Jones comes and sings with me and Loretta Lynn. For me, a kid from Flatwoods, Kentucky, that's the moment I go, oh, I love this. Yeah, this is the creativity. This is what it's supposed to feel like. And George Jones and Loretta Lynn in here singing on this song. The creative part for me is making the music. I, I love to sing. I love to do a lot of the harmonies. Um, if you listen to the album, a lot of the harmonies back there, you might hear different parts that sound like a quartet. And my dad had a gospel quartet, and usually I'll try to emulate each one of those four-part harmonies in whatever recording of the song. And then I, in today's world, I may stack them and triple them and quadruple them every now and then, you know. But um, it's really fun, you know, to be able to take that stuff now. I love to record. I love it. I, I carry my guitar with me everywhere I go. Um, 
I just uh, oh, I wrote a song yesterday on the way to do that thing. Oh, I just write all the time, and that's kind of what I want to do. I, I was born a singer-songwriter, and that's kind of how I want to leave this world. I took a couple detours along the way. You know what I mean? Like, I kind of lost myself a little bit, and um, and I don't have any regrets. But um, you know, when you start acting, um, then you become that character. And a lot of times, I, I used to hear Elvis. Uh, you know, one of his, to me, one of his greatest recordings was "Caught in a Trap," and I think he was singing "Caught in a Trap." In some ways, he got caught in a trap. You know, like caught in a trap of making all those movies, a string of movies that you know. Well, in in today's world, you would call. 50 movies in a row is called a series. And I've done two of those that went 100 episodes each. And, and then, you know, that combined with, you just get caught, you know. And, and so um, for me, just leaning in, I'm, I'm Billy Ray Cyrus, a singer-songwriter from Flatwoods, Kentucky. Nothing fancy. I'm left-handed. I was born upside down, and, and that's just the way it is, you know. That's, I am what I am. And I was, yeah, so I just... It's good at this stage mm -hmm. to just be an old rock and make music, you know, and do what feels real. That's that's what feels good to me. You're doing it. We have time for one more. Hi. I was just curious, what's your favorite song on your album so far, and are you doing anything special for Veterans Day? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, some Gave All, and again, it's Some Gave All is not on the album, um, but Some Gave All is a special part of me, my life, my heart, my spirit, it's, it's part of, it's a big part of who I am. Um, my attorney would tell you it's even in my stuff that when I'm buried, if I get a rock with my name on it, it's just going to say some gave all, but I don't even care if I get a rock with some gave all, just dust me up, throw me in the air and yell some gave all is fine. It doesn't matter, you know, <laughs> but either way. Um, and again, to me, that's that moment of me, a kid from Kentucky, being able to say thank you to the men and women who fought, lived, and died for my freedom so that a kid from Flatwoods, Kentucky, can dream the dream and pursue the dream. And um, so it's a special part. Uh, so Some Gave All will always be special. Um, this whole album, um, gosh, I, I really can't narrow any of them down because it just goes from one thing to the next. and. And you might hear one style on song number one, and then song number two goes completely a different direction, and number three is may go to just bare bones, bluegrass acoustic and banjos, and then the next thing is the crazy dance mix that, you know, it's it's just a really, the album kind of takes you on a journey. Oh, and there's a, I shouldn't even talk about this. Um, it's not even a song. There's a little thing at the end of the album called Worry, and Worry is... Um, Back in the day, 1993 or so, I was doing. A, you guys were probably there. One of those big <laughs> concerts. Uh, yeah, there was 20,000 people, whatever. And for some reason, at the end of the the concert, I started telling the audience about a church sign that I read on the way to the show, and it was about worry. And I'm not going to give it away and tell you, but it it became this great big accident. And um, yeah, I. I you can tell I get kind of lost in it, a little bit like I am right now. And um, my drummer uh, and my guitar player, uh, guitar player especially, Terry Shelton, um, put some kind of um, crazy music behind it. Kinda, I don't know. It, it sounds really fun. It's, it's just, I don't it's know, bad record. porno music of some type. It's, <laughs> and he does some bad stuff. In the, like there's some music playing. And so Noah Lindsay says, Dad, if you're releasing one if you're releasing a new album, you have to put Worry on there. It's called Worry. And Worry was never made to be a record. It was just a little thing that my band actually was making fun of what happened to me. And, but Noah, every now and then, I'd come in the house, and I'd hear her in my studio, and she'd be playing her friends Worry. And as my, they were doing a documentary on her, and she brought the producers in, played them Worry. I said, Noah, why are you doing it? She said, you've got to put this on your album. So in the last moment, I added this little embarrassing moment called Worry. And um, but it's specifically, you know, Noah said you got to do this, and if this this is your last album, you got to put Worry on. So Worry's on. There's a lot of crazy on this album. <laughs> set the record straight. As a matter of fact, that might be what you come away with when you yeah. listen to all 17 songs. I think it ended up being, yeah, and that in itself is a large album. I would have added more because I'm just 
recording like crazy right now. Just that's all I do: sing, write, and record. Well, you 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 can oh. rename it a lot of crazy. A lot. There's a lot. Of, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's probably a better name. Yeah. To be I like set, set yeah. the record straight. What's your name? Melissa. Melissa, where are you from? I'm from Jersey. From Jersey. All yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> thank you for coming. That was a great question. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you guys can all get Set the Record Straight today because it's out. And you can download Some Gave Them All. Uh, and thank you all for being here so much. It's been so great. Mm -hmm.